All right. Good stuff. All right. So this is going to be my X value. So I'll right click and rename this. And this is going to be my Y value for the uh, my point, right? And this point, we're going to label it. I'm going to group it. And this is going to be called my world point. All right, so this point exists within the world coordinate system. Now we want to make a point that's on the surface, right? That's in the surface's space, not in the world space. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a way to um, evaluate this surface at a particular coordinate. All right, so I'm going to look at the surface tab, and under analysis, we're going to find evaluate surface, which is right here. It says evaluate local surface properties at a UV coordinate. Perfect. Okay. So this asks for the surface and the UV coordinate. All right. So let's connect our plane surface to S. We know that that's the surface we want to evaluate. And now we need to somehow define the UV coordinate. Does anybody have any ideas on how we might define the UV coordinate? All right, so um, one way to do it would be to take our point X, Y, Z and make it again, right? So I'll take all of this and I'll copy it and paste it. And this isn't going to be my world point. But this is going to be my surface point, right? And instead of X and Y, I'm going to label these as U and V. Okay? Now, the fact that these labels say X, Y, and Z doesn't matter, right? Because we can use this point in whatever coordinate system we want, right? So let's take our surface point, right, that we've labeled here, and let's plug that into the UV input, right? Now, we not only get a point at that location, but we also get the representation of a plane, right? So if we move our slider around for our surface point, Right? Our point and plane move through the space of the surface. All right. So we can move in the U domain or in the V domain. In either case, we're updating where our point exists on a surface. Okay. So this is a really critical step, right? We have a, a point in the world and a point on the surface. Now, if we look at, in our Rhino viewport, we actually have three points present. Does anybody know why we have this point, this point, and this point? We'll look at our color feedback here in the, in the Rhino viewport. If I select my evaluate surface object, there's my point in my frame. If I select my world point, that's at 2, 1, 2.1, What about this other guy here? Who's that? If we select the surface point, why is it that we have a point there? Well, this is a point by X, Y, Z, and we're using it for a surface coordinate, but it's still being made in the world, right? Because it doesn't know that we're using it for UV. So let's select our surface point and make sure that we right-click on the canvas and turn the preview off. Now things should be a little bit more clear. We have a point that's only on the surface. We have a point that's in the world. And each are controlled with uh, two sliders. Okay. So we've gotten that far. Let's take a look at, um, at the evaluate surface object. Let's see what it gives us, right? We gave it as inputs the base surface and the UV coordinate. Right? Out of this, we get a point in the world, X, Y, Z. Right? So we can go from points on a surface to points in the world. Right? Remember, those points are in the same location. 
but they have different ways of being described by UV coordinates or XYZ coordinates. Additionally, we have a normal vector at that UV coordinate and the frame at that UV coordinate. And a frame is the plane perpendicular to that surface, oh, sorry, uh, tangent to that surface in both directions. Okay, so here's my, my uh, evaluate surface. And while we're here, let's talk about this uh, preview here. This is the plane preview in Grasshopper. And we can change the size of that if we want it to be bigger or larger under the solution, uh, the display preview plane radius. Um, we can specify this setting here. Say maybe I want to double it. Type in 1.5, hit enter, and now my plane is bigger. So based on the scale of your model, right, your planes may look a little different. Okay. And let's do one more thing. Let's look at how we can actually also um, find the ISO curves that travel through both directions but pass through that specific UV coordinate. So under the curve tab, uh, under spline, there's an object called ISO curve. And let's drop that into the canvas. I'll use my same surface coordinate, my plane surface, and connect that. So now I have two lines. They're just lines because I'm working with a plane surface. If I go to top view, maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see. Right? If I move my slider, right, my point, my frame, and my two curves going in the two directions are being previewed. Okay, great. Now, here's a challenge question. This is one way to create a uh, UV coordinate, right? Or what we're calling a surface point. So I'll label that here. We can also call this a UV coordinate. Right? There's, a, there's another way to um, use a different user ob interface object to define where that UV coordinate should be. All right, so I'll show you where it is. You're going to give it a shot and let me know how, if you find out any weird kind of behavior that comes from it or if it's operating as you expect. So if you go to params input, use the MD slider, drop that into the canvas. This is a two-dimensional slider or a multi-dimensional slider. So you can specify two values at the same time. Go ahead and replace your UV input using the MD slider. Let me know what you get. Give you a second to hook that up. And if you, if it seems like it's misbehaving, go ahead and type what, what, what you think the reason is in the question window. All right, you guys are on it, all right? You've observed that if you move your multidimensional slider, it doesn't use the entire surface, right? So the space of our surface is defined as 0 to 6.4, at least in my case, that's what my sliders say, and 0 to 4.53. But my multidimensional slider, it can't specify a value bigger than 1 and 1. So there's two ways you can go about doing this, uh, to actually making this a little bit more useful. One is that you could edit the slider, the multidimensional slider, and specify the correct x and y domains um, so that it can use the entirety of the surface. Um, but if you go to change anything up here, that means that this will have changed and therefore you have to go back and reset this object, the multidimensional slider, to have the correct min and max in the, in the x and y. 
So there's another way that we can work with surface space, right, uh, relative to the uh, numerical description of that surface. All right, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a surface container from params geometry. And this is just going to be a way to pass through our surface. The surface goes into this um, additional container. This is essentially going to make a copy of it, but allows us to operate on it separately from this object. Then I'm going to replace all the inputs that that object was connected to. All right. And this is going to be my plane surface also, but I'm going to right click it and specify that it should be re-parameterized. So notice what that does, right? The minute I, I select that and choose it to be re-parameterized, my domain, two-dimensional domain defining my surface goes from 0 to 3.7 and 0 to 4.3 down to 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So re-parameterizing a surface forces the numerical description between, to be between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. And therefore, it's a little bit more intuitively to move through. Right, so with a multi-dimensional slider, which has a default min-max of 0 and 1, now we can move through the entire surface as we move the grip on our multi-dimensional slider. Okay. So again, the, the idea here is that surfaces, when we're working with them in Rhino, or if we're generating them in Grasshopper, have a particular parameter space, right? It may be something that makes sense, like it was here, 0 to 3.7 and 0 to 4.53. Or it may be something that doesn't make sense. And in either case, that's fine. It's just that there is a parameter space as the surface was created, and there's a parameter space relative to how we want to think about it. So reparameterize is typically uh, an easy, the easy way to work with the surface space with numbers that make sense. So if I want to be about halfway through the U and about a quarter of the way in the V, right, 0.5 and 0.25, those make sense as helping me find those points on the surface. All right. So um, we're going to take some questions now, uh, one of which was, where is the multidimensional slider? That's under params input MD slider. If you have any other questions at this point, um, go feel free again to drop them into the questions window. And while you're typing, I'll also uh, address another question, which was having to do with how the spaces of a surface are labeled, right? R1 parameter space for, for a curve, R2 parameter space for a surface, R3 space for the world. Right, that has to do with how many coordinates there are to define that point in that coordinate system. So there was a question, is there an R4 space or a, a space that has more dimensions? And yes, of course there is. There's lots of interesting uh, additional coordinate systems such as hyperbolic space. You can also think about uh, the fourth dimension as being time if you're thinking about simulation. And there's some others as well. Right? Um, these are just the kind of basics and um, the ones that we'll most frequently be using. Okay, so another question was about dividing a surface into segments that are spaced by uh, dimensions as opposed to uh, as opposed to UV coordinates right? and that's a really good question um, we'll come back to that as we start to get into actually dividing our surface up but uh, the basic answer is that if you want to divide a surface up based on uh, let's say a, a dimension you have to think about doing that relative to the world right if you want your surface to be 1.5 centimeter turn into 1.5 centimeter strips, right? That that distance 1.5 centimeters is relative to your XYZ coordinate system. 
So you have to think about how the surface resides within that XYZ coordinate system. And for the most part, you wouldn't be using UV coordinates in order to do that. You'd be using something external to the surface, such as a collection of planes, to split that surface up. Okay, and there was also another question about the frame, right? Uh, the frame being the object that we see previewed here um, when we evaluate the surface. Okay, so the frame is the plane that is perpendicular to these two curves. Sorry, I keep saying that. Tangent to these two curves, right? So right now, it doesn't give us all that much additional information, right? It's just a, looks like an XY plane that's been moved there. Um, but as we start to make our surface more complex, this is going to be a lot more useful, right? Um, and for the time being, maybe let's use the, uh, that, that frame to actually do something else. So let's say we wanted to preview the UV coordinates as values, uh, text values, in the viewport, right? So the way we can do that is let's go to vector point text tag 3D. We're going to use the frame here as the location of our text tag. And the text we're going to supply is going to come from our multidimensional slider. So here now we see the numerical values 0 0.5024 and 0 0.247 uh, displayed here as text, right? And we can use a slider if we want to make that text size font size a little bit smaller. All right, so now that text is being uh, drawn on that frame, which is now moving through the surface. All right, so as we explore the surface, we can preview both the coordinate that we're using currently, as well as what that gives us as a result. Okay, really great questions. All right, so I'm going to save this file, and we're going to bounce over to the next exercise.